In this video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions, going over some upcoming severe weather, which there's a lot more of actually, and we're going to be breaking down also that tropical threat. Let's get straight into this video without further ado, and let's just break down the current conditions real quickly. We do have some showery activity that we need to talk about here in the northwestern corner of the nation, and then just a massive amount of activity here clearly taking place in the central and eastern United States. The east coast is actually pretty high and dry, but... Uh, for kind of the interior eastern regions of the country and then kind of those central eastern regions there, like the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest, uh, even the deep south here, we're seeing quite a bit of this activity. So first things first, let's zoom in to the northwest as always. And there is just that showery activity moving across the region, kind of like this flow looks about like this. And mostly there's lighter showers taking place in there and it's almost entirely rainfall for almost everywhere. Uh, there is some heavier pockets, especially there in northern Washington. And we saw at times that was popping up there for northern Idaho as well. Um, but those have kind of died down a little bit. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with all of that. This is mostly lighter though, however. Uh, and especially when we're talking about what you guys are used to, this is going to be quite minimal. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with this giant chunk of precipitation here in the United States. But let's just start up here in the northern region. We can see that the flow is... Kind of like this, it's just this gulf moisture that is just exploding uh, over this region and it's really just spreading out and uh, yeah, it's a really weird scenario we see taking place here. There is some heavier pockets, especially in here, I'm a bit concerned with some flooding. Obviously when you see a lot of yellows like that and darker greens, uh, that means hours and hours of steady rainfall obviously, which can lead towards obviously inches and inches of precipitation which can pretty much lead towards flooding, in other words. So we need to watch very closely for that. Um, we do have some heavier pockets for some other spots as well. As we take a look a little bit westward, we see for Nebraska and South Dakota, we see quite a bit of activity. And then also for portions of the Ohio Valley here as well, we're seeing uh, not as persistent of precipitation, so we're not seeing quite as much uh, you know, space of precipitation, but we are seeing also the yellows and oranges popping up in there as well, which indicates obviously heavier rainfall. Also, as we move towards our next layer here, a little bit further south, we see there is some even heavier showers and thunderstorms taking place in this corridor. Um, so definitely in the oranges, obviously there is very heavy rainfall taking place, maybe even thunderstorms. And then the yellows and greens is going to be your more light to moderate stuff. There is a pretty consistent uh, area up here of this precipitation that has taken place um, that could also lead towards some flooding as it's staying rather stationary. Now, as we head even further south, we're seeing the heaviest of this precipitation, which is mostly gulf moisture. Uh, obviously, we can see the flow is almost directly north over here. And then we can see a cold front over here heading through um, so this is going to kind of smash into all of this and lead towards some pretty decent thunderstorms potentially uh, wherever it goes. So as we see it move across the region, uh, we will see that line of just strong thunderstorms moving through. So it's going to move through the entire region probably and lead towards mostly moderate to heavy precipitation, even heavy at times, especially in those thunderstorms, potential for severe weather as well, cannot be ruled out. So we'll need to talk about that as well. Now, I guess as we zoom out, that's pretty much it. I mean, we do have some pretty sporadic, very light showery activity taking place in some of these regions. But yeah, that's mostly everything that's ongoing at this point. I know that was a lot there happening in this region. But what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and talk about some model guidance real quick. Here we are taking a look at some of our simulated radar. I'm just going to move towards this afternoon. And we see a lot of this activity in here. We see our low here, we see that cold front uh, and a lot of that activity heading out ahead of it here towards the north with very warm and humid air, very dry and cold air likely behind it. So this is kind of the look with this storm system, also a bit of a warm front up here. Uh, so overall warmer for a lot of these regions. Let's just keep moving on with this as we approach about Thursday, uh, tomorrow afternoon, we see quite a bit of activity still along this cold front area. Um, warm front up here bringing probably pretty persistent rainfall as well uh, and as we approach friday we see a lot of this activity reach the eastern seaboard with that cold front and i believe there's actually a slight risk on 
most of these days here along this frontal boundary. So there is uh, a pretty limited, but also, I mean, there is a risk at severe weather. So we're going to have to really pay attention to that. Obviously, we see some activity moving on toward the northwest by this point. Uh, again, that's going to be about Friday. Uh, the 27th here, Saturday, the 28th, and we see, again, some of this activity really working its way into the region here for the northwestern region of the United States. Still some lingering showery activity up there for the northeastern corner of the nation. And by the time we reach Sunday, the 29th, we see only this really remaining. Uh, that's going to be the main thing to note. And we see warm air really surging into the eastern half of the country here. Uh, by the time of reaching late weekend and even into Monday, things are going to be really warming up. I mean, the jet stream to me looks like this, so probably some warmer air than what we're dealing with right now for certain uh, will be working its way in with colder air really working its way in behind this precipitation, leading towards some potential snowfall for a lot of the mountainous regions out west. Next to low really developing here, maybe a warm front trying to develop out ahead of it. Um, yeah, that, that looks to be what's going on. A cold front here, warm front there, potentially is kind of the look to me. That's by June 1st. It's going to be a Wednesday. Thursday, June 2nd. We see some stormy activity here in the eastern United States. Potential for scattered and isolated thunderstorms, but really there is no strong low anywhere. The main concern here is this tropical system here that kind of meanders its way this way. We'll see that in a little while. Um, I know a lot of you are curious about that, but the European has really changed tides here. Look at the track. We'll take a really deep dive into this in just a moment, I promise. But we see it kind of try to track that way, which was definitely not the case yesterday. Uh, yeah, look at that. It just wants to head north. So we'll see what ends up happening with that, but that looks to be the direction as of now. Uh, by the time we reach about June 3rd, we do see some more activity building into the eastern United States here. So we're seeing more thunderstorm activity there by June 4th. All right. Now here's the total precipitation for the next 10 days. And if you're anywhere in the whites, you're looking at about no precipitation. Um, if you're anywhere in the grays, you're looking at 0.1 or less inches of precipitation. Greens will be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of precipitation. Blues will be 0.5 to an inch of precipitation. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns and grays will be five to ten inches of precipitation over the next ten days. For snowfall, uh, we're really looking at only the, the western mountains really seeing any of this, obviously. If you're anywhere in the grays, you're expecting a dusting. If anything, blues will be two to six inches of snowfall. Purples will be six to ten. Pinks will be ten to twenty. And your pastels will be twenty inches plus. Now, for the temperature anomalies, and right after this, we're going to break down the tropics, so don't worry, but for the temperatures over the next 10 days, uh, let's just keep moving on with this. We're a little bit cooler for the eastern seaboard as of now. Things will warm up a little bit as we approach into Friday. We will see some warmer air work its way in. Uh, still, the jet stream is about like this, so we're seeing a bit of a ridge here, a bigger ridge in the west, so a lot of the warm air right now is over the western United States. We're seeing some colder air there for the central regions of the United States. As we approach towards Saturday, this is Saturday right here, things are a little bit cooler still in the eastern United States, but we see things transition to where Sunday we get warmer temperatures. We really do. We get warmer temperatures moving into the eastern United States. Blues here will be colder than normal. As we approach Monday here, this is going to be Memorial Day, actually. I mean, east of the Rockies, I mean, things are looking Really, really nice here on Memorial Day. Uh, even borderline hot for a lot of these regions up here. These darker red regions especially is we're going to be about 10 to 15 degrees above your average temperature, which is going to be a pretty significant departure there. Uh, and then for a lot of the western United States, things are going to be very cool compared to normal. Um, as we approach Tuesday, we can see this heat wave, borderline heat wave. I think this could be a heat wave. Uh, moves into the eastern United States. Wednesday, still lingering around, so... I definitely think the possibility is there for a heat wave. If you can stay in 90s long enough, it will be an official heat wave. Um, we basically approached that, and I think even hit that with that last round of heat that we had. But this looks like days and days of heat, and really we only start to cool down by the time we're reaching um, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th time frame. And that's really, I mean, days 7, 8, 9, and 10 here on the 10-day forecast. So really that is the less confident area so we'll have to wait and see with that 
it does look very hot for the final half of that 10-day period. Um, and this cooler, more dreary weather that we're dealing with here in the eastern United States as of now will come to an end, and we will see warm air return. Now for the tropics... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the tropics real quickly. We see that I've gone too far there, so let's just move this back. We see this vorticity, cyclonic vorticity built in for this region that I'm circling. This is basically, up in the atmosphere, large areas of rotation, larger than tornadoes, obviously. You would not see a tornado on this, and a model can't even forecast that anyway, but more like hurricanes and cyclones and things like that is what you would see on this. Low pressure systems that are spinning. Uh, so very large scale rotation and the reds is indicating more areas of that taking place stronger areas of that these blues and greens and stuff up here is a little bit more minor uh and as we approach this is thursday june 2nd we can see that it's moved up kind of like this and we'll see it just kind of slide like that but by june 3rd it's kind of north of this yucatan peninsula here and it's sitting in the middle of the gulf and it could really go north east south, or even curve back west, potentially. So really, at this point, we have no idea what this is going to do. Um, so it's a big old mystery, but really at this point, there is a potential tropical system that's going to cross over Mexico and head into the Gulf of Mexico, and we really need to pay attention to that. As we take a look here at the National Hurricane Center, we can see here that we have our two tropical disturbances. We're not worried about this yellow one here. It's this red one, 80% chance of development over the next five days, and then a 30% chance over the next 48 hours. So over the next two days, there's a 30% chance this thing's going to develop. And over the three days following that, there's an 80% chance that it will develop. So that is our system, and kind of what's expected to potentially take place is that it will cross in like this into the Gulf of Mexico. That's the concern, and then the European model had it doing about like this. So... That leaves a lot of questions. We will have to wait and see and track this system and really just see what it does. Like I said yesterday when we started tracking this, I'm going to be showing you guys every single day. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to tune in daily as I upload daily. And we will just be trop really tracking this tropical system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on here and take a quick look at the severe weather. Now here's the day one categorical outlook here from the Storm Prediction Center for Wednesday, May 25th. Or today from the time I'm making this video. As you can see, we have two general thunderstorm risks of severe weather, one up there for North Dakota and uh, Montana there, and then one for a lot of the eastern United States and the central United States, and that's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so you're going to want to heed every watch, warning, and advisory. Our darker green region there is going to be our marginal risk for the Gulf states up through the Ohio Valley, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible. For day two here on Thursday, May 26th, or tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, we have two general thunderstorm risks, one for the northwest and one for the southeast and eastern United States as a whole. Again, it's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so pay attention. The two darker green regions within both of those areas is going to be our marginal risk, and that's where we expect, again, isolated severe weather to be possible. And then the two yellow areas, one there for the northwest and one for Ohio and surrounding states, that's where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible, um, and that's called our slight risk, by the way. For day three, we can see things transitioned eastward. Uh, we see two general thunderstorm risks again, and then two marginal risks again, where we expect isolated severe weather. But we have a slight risk all the way from South Carolina all the way up through North Carolina, Virginia, the Delmarva, D.C., uh, Pennsylvania, and into New Jersey, and a little bit of New York there as well. And that is where we have a slight risk of severe weather and expect scattered severe weather to take place. For day four, we have a little bit of an extended outlook here. For Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota, we have a 15% chance of severe weather. And this translates to a slight risk once we're in the extended range, or once it's within the, the three days. So this is going to be for Saturday, May 28th. This should translate to a slight risk. Uh, we'll actually be able to see it tomorrow. It'll be day three. And then this one we'll see in two days, but this 15% chance area, that yellow area there, should translate to a slight risk as well on Sunday, May 29th. Anyway, I know we just went over so much information, and I think we went pretty quickly, which is good. Uh, but for today's uh, confidence tab, we're still at a four out of six. This tropical system really has me puzzled, and uh, you know it's pretty long range, but the models are in pretty good disagreement so we have to wait and see over the next coming days if they can come together on something but we're at a four out of six for now 
For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harlan, Michael Kudala, Sakapite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.